welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about specific heat capacity. Okay, so this is into the thermal physics realm and we're going to talk about specific heat capacity. Okay, now in some uh, syllabuses or in some people may, they may call this sensible heat and the whole idea of specific heat capacity and latent heat it's the whole idea of what does, when I put energy into a substance like this box, what does happen to that box? Does its temperature increase or does it go from a solid to a liquid? Okay, so before I go into actually what specific heat capacity is, I'm going to draw a diagram to explain what happens when I actually put energy into a system. So I've got a graph here, okay, and this is the energy... In. So this is energy I put in. I'm going to use the letter Q here. Now this Q um, is on the data sheet. So let's get the data sheet here. Do, 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 do. Thermal physics. Where are we? Yep, they call it Q. In chemistry, it might be E or um, this formula uh, for, uh, E for energy as well. But Q in this idea is energy. Okay. And this here is. The temperature. So to start with, as I add energy, the temperature would rise. Okay, so this is from in its solid state here. And then what happens? There is a point where that solid will become a liquid. And what actually happens is the temperature doesn't change. Now, once it's all been changed of state, the temperature increases again. And so, of course, so this is the liquid stage. And so, of course, we get to the point here where it changes again. And then we have a gas here. Of course, after that, you get into plasmas, etc. But there are two very distinct regions on that graph itself. There is this part where the temperature is going up, and this part where the temperature isn't changing, but the state's changing. Okay? So... The part I'm going to talk about with specific heat capacity is this part where the temperature is changing. So specific heat capacity is all about when energy is added, there is a change in the object's temperature. And as you can see here, this is a linear relationship, so that I know that the energy is proportional to the temperature. Okay. And the formula that we're going to use, which is called the specific heat capacity formula, is that the energy needed is the mass of the object times by C times by the change in temperature. Okay. So this here is mass. This letter here is a specific heat capacity. And this is the change in temperature. Now this can be in Kelvins or degrees. This technically that doesn't matter. Going from one degree C degree C to, uh, to eleven degrees C is a change of ten. From going from two seven four to two eight four is also a change of ten. So this here can be in degrees C or degrees Kelvin, I don't mind, okay? Now, this idea of specific heat capacity, okay, C is the energy over mass delta C, or energy needed to raise one kilogram by one degree or one Kelvin. So the units for specific heat capacity tend to be joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Okay, sometimes seen as degree C. And what this um, specific heat capacity is, is a material property. Different materials react differently to the same amount of heat energy. So for example, I may put my hand on a uh, 
over a fire and it would hurt me a little bit, it would, my temperature would rise a bit. However, if I put something else, maybe like an ice cube or some jelly, it would, it would rapidly change its temperature very quickly. Another way of looking at it is if you were cooking. This is why certain bits of the food will be cooked differently, okay? Because they have different specific heat capacities. The higher the specific heat capacity, so the higher, the more energy it requires to raise that temperature up. So when you're making, for example, a pie, this is why you should never ever make a jam toasty at all. The specific heat capacity of the jam inside compared to the bread outside are different. So when the end, assuming they're both getting the same 100 or whatever joules of energy, their temperatures would rise differently. Let's give you an example. So let's say I have uh, my specific heat capacity of water and that's 4,200 joules per kilogram per Kelvin, okay? And I've got my specific heat capacity of um, aluminium, and that is, I think, about 900 joules per kilogram per Kelvin, okay? So if I had, let's say I had um, two and a half kilos of stuff, and I put in 1,000 joules, Let's see what happens, what kind of change of temperature I'm looking at here. Okay, so for water, I've got a thousand. I've got the formula up here for you. Okay, I've got a thousand equals 2.5 times by 4,200 times by my change in temperature. So my change in temperature is going to be 1,000 divided by 2.5, divided by 4,200, and I get an answer of 0 0.095 degrees C, or Kelvin. If I do it for aluminium, so there's 1,000, same amount of energy, is 2.5 times 900 times by delta T. So 1,000 divided by 2.5, divided by 900, might get an answer of delta T equals 0 0.44 degrees. It could be degree C or degree Kelvin. So I've got some water here, and I've got some aluminium. They both have different specific heat capacities, and if I put the same amount of energy in, I get very different uh, temperature rises. If I get um, a kilogram of water, and heat it up with a thousand joules, it's only going to rise by about 0 0.1 degree uh, of a Kelvin or a degree C. Whereas if I took aluminium, an aluminium block, here, I'm going to be, its temperature would increase more. Okay. Now, a little point to be aware of for specific heat capacity is specific heat capacity changes depending on if it's the solid, the liquid, or the gas. So please be aware that in some questions you might be getting a uh, transition of ice and then it melts and then it heats and then it goes to steam, etc. Um, knowing here what state it's in, so this is just water, I, I said at the beginning, but please be aware when you're looking through, they might give you a bit of data. So that there is the basics of specific heat capacity. It's when you put energy in and the temperature changes and you can calculate how much temperature has changed, okay? It doesn't matter what it started at, this, this could be at, say, like 50 degrees C, it could be 20 degrees C. I know if I put a thousand joules extra in, I'm going to get this much extra change, okay? So that there is specific heat capacity.